Hello and welcome to Tech Talk here at the Miami Grand Prix. I'm joined as ever by our resident technical expert, Hi, Albert Fabrica. Very warm welcome to you. My pleasure. Warm being the operative word, because here in Miami, where it is hot, it is sunny, it is humid, we are talking about the weather. Of course, in Formula One, we travel all over the globe. We experience different climates, weather patterns, weather systems, and they can change day to day, even session to session. Now, air pressure, air temperature, wind speed, wind direction, all affect the performance of a Formula One car. Teams need up to the minute information on what the weather is doing to truly optimize their setup and the car performance. And Albert, this is where you come in, this is yeah. where all of this comes in as well. Talk us through it. Yeah, because it has everything that they can measure on the weather and predict for the future. It has a big impact on the car. For example, the wind, very easy to understand that if the cars had headwind, it will slow down on the main straight. If it has tailwind, it can push the car a little bit more of a speed. Or if it's crosswind, it will affect all the structures, aerodynamic structure of the car. The driver can uh, feel suddenly a loss of downforce. That's dangerous. So they need to measure the wind properly to know the speed and the direction. Temperature, important. You said that's hot here, not only it for the hot. driver. <laughs> For it us is, as well. <laughs> yes, as well. But for the car, how the cooling will work. Yes. Not today, also tomorrow for the race. Or the tarmac, how is improving the, or increasing the temperature to know the, the behavior of the tires for today, but also for tomorrow, the humidity. Also for the engines is important, not only for the driver. So there is uh, the pressure for the dynamic setup. There is a lot of parameters that the teams like to control on time, in real time, to know what's going on, but to predict what can happen tomorrow. So they have devices to measure all these parameters. Like, for example, this meteor station that I'm sure on the last 10 years, for sure, you remember to have seen this in top of the pit walls? Yes. So it's very easy. A meteor station where they can control, they have sensors to measure the pressure, to measure the temperature, but also to measure the wind. wind. Well, we're missing the chicken here, but, <laughs> but as you can see, if we blow a little bit more of wind, also, we can check where the wind, this is... The direction as well. It's not rocket science, but it's important for, for the teams that can also can check temperatures and can check the rain. Important to measure the rain. It's not, it's not a real, real time on these kind of stations, but there is like a funnel, I'll show you. There is like a funnel on here. Can you see the funnel? It's like a funnel here inside. So when it's raining here, it measures that there is some uh, rain. Moisture in the air. Yeah, but they can measure how much is raining. But the problem on this is that you only have one and you have over your pit wall and maybe this is not quite significant. For example, on the wind speed, because it's in the middle of the grandstands yes. and the garages, so the, the wind can change. It's not important on the straight. It's maybe better on the cornering or on the end of the straight. So. And tracks stretch five, six kilometers through yeah. varying ele elevation, through a, a whole vast area, so it could be raining in yeah. turn 12 to 14 exactly. and dry on the pit lane straight. Exactly, so the teams have started to manage to bring more devices like this or even radars or even spotters in every corner to call them what's going on there, what's going on there. So to try to have a, a real view of what's going really with the weather conditions and all the temperatures and, and parameters that we have talked about. Even, for example, we have seen many engineers going out with a device like this that is a infrared sensor that reads the temperature of the tarmac yeah. but you it's the same thing you have the temperature on the straight but you don't have the temperature on the corners for example that can be different depending on the solar uh, radiation everything had his own system but you know uh, this is uh, there was uh, an evolution on this and FIA and all the teams agreed to have the same pr supplier to have all the data better data everything is fair all the teams get the same information. Yes, because FIA need to know the, the temperature as well. You remember that, for example, the headrest forms, there is a limit on the temperature to change the characteristics or uh, the, what, the fuel system as well. There is a FIA must set a temperature where the teams can uh, apply the regulations depending on the, on the thing. So uh, everyone needs to need, to need a proper data that is coming from a service that now is supplying to everyone that is called France Meteo, Meteo France, that are a French company that has three people here working. Uh, they brought new technologies like this. Everything like this is now. It's, yeah, it's amazing. 
There it is. It's in a small piece like this. It can measure the wind like this with an ultrasonic sensors. These four little sensors you can see here. And they're with, so tiny. Yeah, it's crazy that it's that, like, that will give such accurate information. Yeah, and it can read even the, the rain with op optical sensors. So they can measure the temperatures, they can measure a lot of parameters. And the good thing on this is they have more than one. So ah, they they're dotted about, aren't they? Yes, I'll show you. Here, this is a map of the circuit. So they have one unit of this here in the pit lane, mm -hmm. in the main straight, that is also measuring the temperature on the tarmac. But they placed one more here, one more here, another one here. So all the teams have real time on real time information, all these parameters in four places all around the circuit. So they have a better information rather than having just one station yeah. here or calling people that is in the <laughs> corner number number eight. Apart of that, you remember in Monza when we talk about the light panels? Yes. The stewards that are managing the light panels, they have a button that is it's raining. So when it's raining in corner 11, they press the button. The drivers see the, the drops on the light panel, but all the teams receive that information. So they can realize how the rain is already coming into the circuit. It's, it's a good data. It's really, really important also for the race director. For sure. Because another thing is the radar. Because one thing is what's going on, and the other one is what will happen. Yes. If there is a storm, it's raining, they yes. need to know if there is a gap that is going to be a little bit more dry to restart the race or to cancel because it's going, it's going even worse. So what Franz Meteo has done <laughs> is to install one of these radars. I couldn't brought it because it's one meter <laughs> diameter. Disappointing, but yeah, next time maybe we'll bring that. it in. <laughs> it, it's not fixing here on the circuit. It's in, on a roof on a hotel mm -hmm. about seven kilometers away. And this is the image that we see on the on the pit walls where they see the radar. So they can analyze up to 75 kilometers and they can detect drops at 20 kilometers. The range so, is huge. Yes. And, they, and for storms as well, lightning, obviously a really important element yeah, there. So this true. is going to help with that, isn't it? Yes. Too? And they are in permanent contact with the local authorities here in the States, because if there is lightning, like you said, we need to stop. In eight kilometers, the lightning, in the States, we have to stop. So they are in contact also with the local authorities, race director, local authorities, France Meteo, to know what's going on. They analyze all the data they have, plus the data supply from, from Europe, and they send report that we can see uh, expected rain in 20 minutes. It's France Meteo who sent this information regarding all the data they have, all the sensors they analyze, and they say, okay, rain is coming in 20 minutes. So they are really precise on that. And they're the race radio messages that we all hear at home when they say we're expecting the rain to stop for five <laughs> minutes and then start again in 13 minutes. Like, how do they know this? And then it's all because of this. Lots of information. And yeah. air pressure as well. Yeah. That's super important for the performance yeah. of the cars, and isn't it? Obviously, the teams uh, can measure the co these conditions on the car. Yeah. To measure the wind and the direction, they have a device like this that is called the pitot sensor that you've probably seen in the middle of the car just uh, ahead of the driver's helmet and it measures the wind speed and the direction of the, the wind when the car is turning, when the car is in your, so they can measure if there is wind in any single corner to analyze the data, to understand some things because sometimes the aerodynamics went off or the driver lose the grip on the car and say, what's going on there? So yeah, there is a gust of uh, wind, so they can measure with this kind of devices that are probably in every single car of Formula One and other categories. So yeah, they have this, this thing, very interesting, very nice and aerodynamically perfect. But are there, what if we didn't have power? I mean, as, oh. you know, as well as just standing outside That's and going, oh, the wind's coming from this way and it's, oh, it's a bit hot and I'm warm and, oh, it's, you know, the sun's out, the sun's gone in. All times, all times they measure the wind and they Human could... Human uh, experience is yeah. something, isn't it? I, I've got some all time things. <laughs> the windsock. There we you go. See, we can old measure fashion. windsock. It's still in some airports. <laughs> yeah. So like, we can rely on that to see the wind speed and the intensity of the wind. And another thing that is, uh, yesterday I was speaking with some drivers, old school drivers, say, how did you realize about the changes of the wind and the gust? And they say, yeah, we are looking for the flax <laughs> at the end of the straight. So you can realize that if the wind is increasing and the change of direction. So these are things that the drivers, uh, not now, rely more on the engineer's information, but in the old times they were looking for the flags and how they change and how they move to understand if the wind is uh, stronger or not. 
driver feedback is really important as well, isn't it? Because whether well, systems and technology may say one thing, but a driver may say, well, yeah. actually, that's, that's now dying down. Real-time information to the absolute second, the driver will be getting that first. For performance and for safety. And in places like Austria, where there is farms around the circuit, sometimes the, some spotters went to the farms and see what's the behavior of the cows to see if they rains out, the rains out, yeah, yeah, the cows, to see if there is a, uh, the rain is coming or not. So there is a lot of methods. A lot of cues we I, can I trust use. these ones. Yeah, this one perhaps the most complete, but uh, yeah. I trust a cow any day. Uh, Moo. <laughs> Moo. Thank you very Thank much you. indeed for another brilliant episode of Tech yes. Talk. We'll see you guys next time.